everyone on behalf of Emily's with St. Condolences to all of you, especially those unable to be here with us in person. We trust that God strengthen you all during this very
one is going to run. The president has to be I'm here to observe or to celebrate the life of the season of the events of Christ of God. Let's all stand as we about to come to us on the Lord.
to Jesus for more than 50 of your life, and one day you will see her again. She's a sin. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's why we can rejoice this morning. Yes, we are heartbroken. Yes, we are going to miss her presence. But I can guarantee if she, you would ask her, if she was able to, to be, be true and to ask her, and she was able to respond and ask her if she wants to come back there, she would say no. <laughs> she would say no. So don't beg for her to come back. She is in a better place. Yeah. But she left something for us to think of. How many of us are going to be in that place? Where she is. You don't have to worry this morning. You don't have to be afraid. God comes to God. Is your life in his this morning?
yourself today, but if your life is not in Jesus' hands, you can get it to him this You may be seated.
was on the keyboard. So that dates me a little bit. It's nice seeing all of you, those of you who I remember. Pastor Ian, you're doing a good job at holding it together. And thank God for that. I came from Grand Bay, Tetmon Grand Bay, Dominica, with solid parents. Daddy and Mommy uh, were very active in my life. Got a scholarship, came to grammar school. My uncle was living in Belfast, so it was more convenient to live in Belfast with him. And through that process, I came across a gentleman called Mugla, Martin Beer. You were playing soccer, a teaser. And then it extended to be a family where Dennis, uh, Hendrix, Eddie, Jeffrey, June be became my brothers and si my sister and brothers. Enjoy your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I met Stephen a couple times, and we, we always, Stephen and I always laugh about each other, like we are the grafting ones in the family. Um, because I look like Martin, apparently, people <laughs> always thought I was my be a child. In fact, as of today, I went down to the bathroom a while ago, and somebody downstairs just said, Martin. <laughs> I said, no, no, that's not Martin. So it seemed like I still carry some features of Martin. <laughs> Life continued for me now very productively. But I want to reflect more fully on my peer. You know, it's one thing to have parents, brothers, sisters, who are flesh. But even the Bible supports those that are away from you. He says, a brother or a friend who is near is better than a brother who is far away. My mom and daddy were in Grand Bay. I mean, Mahu. Mom here substituted in a very big way for me. My lunch was always on the table when I came from school. So I took the bus. I walked straight, straight to Mafia's house and my lunch was covered there. Um, I give Mafia a lot of credit for nurturing me physically and emotionally. Today I live in America and I have attained some success, uh, especially educationally. And I dare not withhold that from her by saying she was excellent and integral part of my education. I was sick for about six weeks, hospitalized. And not one day my mother did not call me at the hospital. And she didn't call just a uh, voice call, video. She wanted to see her son face to face. If I tell you, I cannot put a price on what that meant for me. I have come down several times since she had the first stroke and then subsequent strokes. And it was my greatest pleasure to sit with my mother and talk and reflect. But she was always consistent. That meant a lot. Because today she's gone. But it registers in me. I want to say like Paul had said to Timothy, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Mafia has fought a great fight. And more than, more than anything else, she kept the faith. Which is our hope that we'll see her again. So I'm not crying physically, I'm crying inside. But my hope is, as a child of God, I'm going to see Mafia. Mafia made a difference. Mafia made a difference in many lives. As I said, educationally, she was that for me. But I'm proud to stand here today to say she was always the kind of encourager that we needed. Not only did I become a doctor, but her own very own daughter, which she didn't get a chance to celebrate, June Pierre Edwards, is also a doctor. No, and her husband, Dion, he got his doctorate in accounting and philosophy. I want to say something in closing. The other day I was sitting in my vehicle at lunch break and I pinned something together and I'll tell you the day when I wrote it. And I find it so appropriate to not be right now. So 
I will read it to you. Bear with me as I go through. Always like that when you want something, right? Uh, too many things written in my notes here. A building nail doesn't cost much, but its use goes a long way in holding up huge structures. A building nail. A cassette tape or a CD doesn't cost much, but the benefits you get by listening to it and absorbing the nuggets can significantly change your life. Ah, likewise, love, respect, and consideration. How much does it cost to be based? Very little. Just a little effort. Yet, love, respect, and consideration are priceless to the person receiving them. So my encouragement to all of us, especially Mafia's children, including me, is let's give more. Let's give more of those three things. Love, respect, and consideration. And we will change the world around us just like Mafia did. Thank you. Oh, I can't even walk. 
from today is from that town, um, from First Thessalonians, the passage that we read. 
um, poly I think bring the passage to Second Thessalonians, Thessalonians uh, I'm sorry, first Thessalonians chapter two uh, verses one to nine. Says 
for yourselves, brethren, no more entrance into you that it was not in vain. In other words, it was not useless. So it was very much successful. But as I said, he attributed the success to parenthood, the qualities of parenthood. So since the first quality that he used was that of the mother, I'm going to spend my time sharing with you concerning the qualities that he talked about. So here are two qualities of motherhood that they employ as a minister in Thessalonica. The first one is the quality of gentleness. Gentleness. In verse 7, he says, We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherished the children. You see, the word gentle here means to be kind and loving in one's attitude or one's disposition. Paul said they were successful because they demonstrated gentleness among the believers in Thessalonica. And they did that by cherishing the believers in that city. Notice he says, even as a nurse cherishes the children. So they were there like a mother who is taking care of the children. The word nurse here has the idea of a nursing mother. That is a mother who is breastfeeding the child. And those of you who are parents, you know what that means. The task that's involved, the toil that's involved. And what it needs, what the gentleness that's needed, the patience, the love. So the apostle said that they treated the believers in that city warmly, like a hen would cover the chicks to keep them warm. They fed them, they bore with them, they taught them to walk and preserved them from. Stumbling. This is typical of a genuine mother toward the children. She will take care of them. She will not let them fall by the wayside. Even in the absence of fathers, the gentle mother will hang in there for her children. Listen, this is the kind of mother. I knew my auntie to be caring, loving, protective of her children as they were growing up. Paul well, made note of that. And even before he may experience some of that, by the time he came on the scene, I, I had more than a mother. Where is she, my dear wife? So, I'm happy that he experienced some of the things that I experienced. But that's who she was. She cared for her children. She cared for the seven of the children that she was given. And Paul said, like my aunt cared for her children, they use the same qualities of minister to the people in Thessalonica. And the result was many of them turned to the Lord. Another quality of motherhood that they employed was the quality of willingness. 
willingness. In, cha in chapter 2 and verse 8, he says, So being affectionate and desirous of you, we were willing to have impacted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dead unto us. They were willing. The word willing here means to be well pleased, to be ready, and happy to perform one's duties. And the word impact means to share, or to give one's self for the benefit of others. So Paul revealed that they were willing to share two things. The first one of the gospel of God. Notice he said in verse 8, we were willing to impart unto you the gospel of God. Paul knew that they needed Jesus Christ because they were lost sinners. And he shared with them. And the result was they trusted the Lord. So the apostle understood what it meant to employ willingness, the quality of willingness. So he said, after they accepted the message of the gospel, in fact, he, he tells us the attitude of how it happened. In verse 5 of chapter 1, he says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. And in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. In verse 6, and he became followers of us and of the Lord. Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. Notice that in much affliction. So there were much opposition, but in spite of the opposition, As they committed themselves to the sharing of the gospel, they were willing. Many of them, when people face opposition, they, what do they do? They give up. But Paul and companion refused to give up. Instead, they continued to preach the gospel. And of course, God was there. There's the power and in the Holy Ghost. And of course, they received the word with much affection. So Paul was devoted to the preaching of the gospel. That's why he ended up in Thessalonica in the first place. That was his mission to go and preach the gospel. You see, the apostle Paul knew that this was the only means to salvation. That's why he says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 6. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are grown also. Verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe to the just and to the great. Paul wanted the best for the Thessalonians. And the best of the best was salvation. You see, in the end of this life, nothing that is accumulated 
on the free market. It doesn't matter what one house upon its own. It matters not. In any case, no one can live this world with those material things that they put in it. But you can go with the impact of the gospel. And so Paul made sure that these people received the gospel of salvation. That is, they recognize that those sinners lost without Christ. And that all they needed to was to receive him. That's why he said they received the word with much affliction. In, in, in other words, in spite of all opposition, they were accepting that word. And they had an assurance that they were secure in the world. You see, true mothers want the best things for the children. I only wanted the best of the best for the children. And that best to work was God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Another time, it was a nothing to mention anything about becoming a Christian. But she decided that's what she wanted for them. She wanted the best. That is why she yielded and allowed all of them to decide, to make the decision to follow Jesus Christ, even when she herself was not following him. She had seven. She, she had seven of them. And there are seven of them. That's a lie. They're still alive. One is in there, I think. Martin is not here. You may be listening, I suppose. Six are here. She decided that she wanted all of them to follow the Lord. She wanted the best. And that is why she allowed them to follow a different faith, even when she was under immense pressure to not allow them to do so. I did some calculation. And I came up with the age of 47. When she decided to have them take that step to follow the Lord. All seven of them. As I said, on the immense pressure to, look, to do so. But she felt that is what she needed to do. The best for them. No wonder after some time thereafter, she decided to follow them as well. To trust Jesus and to follow the faith of the children. That's not a thing. Following Jesus, I mean trusting Him for salvation and living for Him is paramount for life eternal. There is no other way. No other way. The question is whether each of us in here have done so to secure our future without Jesus Christ. One's future is bleak. It's hopeless. And I do not know what that lady to decide that of all the security that I can, I can give my children the best is the Lord and to follow Jesus Christ and as I said that, that was the time when to do such a thing 
You've been strong. She made that decision. What a testimony of my Amen. The one that I think more us today than anything. So she made sure that she um, shared Jesus Christ. Or she allowed them to go somewhere where they could hear about Jesus for salvation. And that place is here. Actually, we were here at that time. We were in Campbell, at Campbell Road. So the second thing that Paul was and his companion was uh, able to share with the, the, um, the people in Thessalonica was in the night. In this case, they said we were willing to have it added unto you know, the gospel of God only, but also our own souls. Because you were dead unto us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day, we preach unto you the gospel of God. They sacrificed their lives, not just give them the gospel, they sacrificed their lives for them. Two ways they sacrificed their lives. The first one is through laborious work on their behalf. He said they labored, or they worked hard, and they travailed, meaning that they experienced pain in their labor. It caused them weariness and pain. Yeah. But it did not matter Amen. because of their concern, their love for them. Not only that they labored in the survey, but he said, we labored night and day. Night and day. All these things fall. And his companion did for well being, the Thessalonians. You know, mothers want their children to succeed. Sister Pei was the best. She labored and travailed for the children. I remember, and that's, and that's not second-hand information. I remember those difficult gardening she did. To provide. For the children. You know, since I was maybe not even a teenager yet, my view of that place was like a Christmas. That's where she labored. Doing gardening to, to provide for her children. To get to that area, to me, it was like a vertical truck. A vertical truck. When you were below, to see the top, the part of the top, you have to look up like that. And that's where she used to plant bananas. To earn some money to provide for her children. And so we used to go there with her 
and we'll carry the bananas on our heads and we would be just you know they were little steps those steps for little holes you know feet that would have been in it and that's when we would walk with that thing on our heads she lived up She used to work at banana boxing plants to provide, to earn money to provide for the children. She made it. of what could be the contents of our prayers. I want you to imagine what the contents of our prayers are. Because that was the final travail. Let her be happy. Let it be that that day, when you see her face to face, you'll be able to say, Your prayers have been answered.
Yes, madam, we know that no one is perfect. Yet we know of God. There's so much good, good that we can do as we allow the Lord to guide us. And we just want to thank you for, for dear sister. And the lesson that we can learn from her. As she devoted herself to her children. All of her the life of her. We pray, oh God. That she will see the reality of a press that a press on the creation, and that she can rejoice on me. Thank you, God, and Jesus. Born, 
we, we realize that we could have done anything in and out of ourselves to be here. Could you have grant every one of us to be born out of a, a woman? And for this, this is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to us in this physical life. I want to thank you, Lord, for it. God, we, we thank you this day for, for mothers. What, what a burden carrier they can be or have been to us or, or, or is to us, those of us who are fortunate enough to have them around us. Now as we gather here, the families that are here in the last day seek to bring closure to the mom, the auntie, the granny, the great grand, the cousin, or the dear friend. We pray this morning earnestly. But the reason why you have given us peace and life is to die. That's what we're going to do that one is when we die. But until then, God, we have given us some things in this life that we ought to do as believers. Most of the family will pray for them. We have to call them. And we will know beyond a shadow of doubt that, that death can bring a lot of our arms up behind it. What family what it is, death will way of, of bringing something up to the best evil. God is also known. I pray the blood of Jesus will prevail. Yes. I pray the blood of forgiveness will prevail. I pray forgiveness will, will, will prevail, Heavenly Father. We will see it's not about us. It's not about anything that you think about this, but we will think about what did Jesus think of us. So we pray for them, every one of them, those who have, who are burdened, those who are taking time to take care of the Father. It's not just about they, they, they have labored whatever way they felt was the best way to handle it. They did it, Heavenly Father. And we ask you to grant them peace with their heart. We don't ask you to spend the next few days in comfort them without, without their mother, their, their grandmother, or their, or their loved one. Give them comfort them, the Father. We don't ask you to spend the final few or minutes or hours with this boy, the Father. Give them comfort. We need you reunite them once again, the Father. Let, 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 let them go back to days when, when they were growing up and playing children. Let them just come back to the memory of the Father. Let something trigger the memories of the Father. Like a rekindle this fire in his family once again. Keep them together in this time. Thank you for having us here today. We bless you for what you're going to do. The great things you're going to do, we bless you for the Lord Jesus. In your name, I pray.
So we do not want milk feed, but when we can give thanks for the passing. But the scripture asks us to give thanks in the passing. So it depends on the attitude that we adopt as we sorrow, that Christ can be seen So today, I want to give God thanks for allowing me to give thanks in the situation. And I want to thank you for your presence. I want to thank all those who are here and all those who have passed in her life through the sickness. My dad, my sister, my brothers, all together, the caregiver, I want to give thanks to you. It is not an easy thing to do to take care of someone who is incapacitated in the way that she was. For those who came in to visit her, when I think of the friends from St. Joseph from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I want to give thanks to you. I want to give thanks to maybe one in particular, I don't know if he's here, I can see him, who ensured that there was food on the table. It's strange, but he did. Ensure that there was always, not necessarily cooked, but there was provisions in the house. So I want to thank you for that. I want to give thanks to the church, the members of the church who took the time to visit her, to share with her. I want to thank those, all of those who take the time to be, to climb on this hill and not being fearful of the dogs that were wrong. I know that people are careful of their way. But those of you who break the time and come to share with her and be with her, I want to give you thanks. I want to give you thanks to the musicians who faithfully play and serve. I want to say thanks to the minister for that they share the profound word of God. I want to thank you for that. We want to thank all of you who have prayed from Salisbury, from Mayo, from St. Joseph, from wherever, all to the country, who has prayed it and come here on this Saturday morning. I want to say thank you. And finally, I want to say thank you, Lord, for allowing us to give thanks to you in this situation. I thank you.